Hey everybody, how you doing? Schuler Ruler here. Thanks for joining me on the channel. I've got a new video here that I actually recorded a little while back dealing with A200 in the 2018 Canadian Electrical Code doing a single dwelling house calculation. It takes us through the steps in determining what the basic load and all of the other loads that are counted for in A201A and then we do at the end a comparison between A201A and B to determine what the calculated load for that service or feeder conductor is. So let's get to it. Hey everybody, I just wanted to quickly do an additional house calculation that you have access to as supplementary information. I've just written some kind of general information about it. Uh, it's a two-story house, right? Uh, service is 122 40 volts and all equipment terminations are 75 degrees Celsius. And then over on the right, I've got some of the loads listed that are within this dwelling unit, this single dwelling here. We have a 122 40 volt 14 kilowatt range, a 122 40 volt 6 kilowatt dryer, a 240 volt 3 kilowatt tankless water heater, a 240 volt 3 kilowatt pool heater, and a 240 volt KVA, sorry, for KVA air conditioner. So all of these loads we're going to take a look at in 8200, right? So 8200 is where we do our single dwelling calculations. Specifically, what we're going to do with this video is determine whether it's going to be 8201A or 1B. As with all of these single dwelling calculations, when I'm not using table 39, I'm going to make a choice between A versus B. So all of the work that we do in our calculation is to determine what A201A will be, and then at the end we'll calculate it to the parameters of B set out for us. So we'll start out with determining our basic load, and in order to determine our basic load, we also need to determine what the total living area of our single dwelling is. So for example, again, I've mentioned I like to draw the little pictures of the house just because it gives me a place to put information, right? So I've got my grade here, right? We have 10 by 11 meters. If you look at the dimensions of the house, it should be based off the inside dimensions of the house, but I've just got 10 by 11 written there. Um, so 10 by 11 is 110 meters. 10 by 11 is 110. And according to 8110, right, to determine the total living area, we take 100% of those areas above grade intended to be lived in, right? So, and then it goes on to say that we're going to take 75% of the basement. So 10 by 11 by 0.75, we should be looking at somewhere in the neighborhood of 82.5 meters squared. What I'm going to do is add everything up above grade, which is 220 meters squared, because when we do that comparison at B, we need to know what is the total size of our single dwelling above grade when we do the comparison, right? So below grade, we had 82.5 meters squared. When I add these together, I get a total living area of 302.5 meters squared. So that's my total living area determined from 8110. And what we do with that number is we take it to 8200. 1A, specifically I and II, that tells us how do we break down that living area. It says we're going to take the first 90 meters squared at 5,000 watts, and then every additional portion thereafter we're going to take at 1,000 watts. So the first thing we need to do is divide our total living area by 90 meters squared. That's going to give me the number of portions that I'm dealing with here. And if we do that, 302.5 divided by 90, we get 3.36 portions. Or really, we have four portions of 90 meters squared. Right? So we're going to apply that. First 90 at 5,000. The next 90 at 1,000. And we're going to continue on until we have account accounted for all of our portions. And that last portion, even though it's not a full 90 meters squared, still goes in at 1,000 watts. We total it up and we'll call this our basic load. All right, we have a basic load in this single dwelling of 8,000 watts. So that's our 8201A item I and II. 
Now we're going to take a look at A201A item III. We're just going to systematically work our way through A200 to determine all of these loads and what their demands are as they contribute towards our main service. So A201A item III discusses our heat and air conditioning. Now the only thing we have mentioned in this example is air conditioning. If you were to have heat versus air conditioning, According to 8106 sub rule 3, if it can be proven that uh, they cannot run simultaneously, you take the larger of the two. In this case, we're just sticking to the air conditioning, and it tells me very clearly in item III that air conditioning is going to go in at 100%. There is no demand applied to that, so we can take that full number, our air conditioning, 240 volt, 4 kVA. We can just assume that 4 kVA is equal in this case to its watts, we have 4,000 watts. Then we're gonna look at item IV, which is our range calculation. So our range in this case is 14 kilowatts. I'm gonna move up a little bit here. We have a 14 kilowatt range, kilowatt range. And we treat it as such. We're gonna take 6,000 watts of the first 12 kilowatts or we'll take 6,000 up to 12 kilowatts, and then anything above that, we're going to take it 40%. So in this case, we're going to go 6,000 watts plus 0.4 times, if we look, 14 kilowatts, we've already accounted for the first 12,000, we have 2,000 watts left. We should be looking at 6,800 watts. That's what my range is going to contribute towards my service calculation. All right, then we look at item V which is all of our loads like tankless water heaters, pool heaters, uh, hot tub heaters, things like that, right? So we're gonna take a look around in our question here. We have this 240 volt, three kilowatt tankless water heater. So tankless water heater. Again, watch for the question throwing in a hot water tank, two very different things. And then we also have this 240 volt, three kilowatt pool heater. Both of these, according to item V, go in at 100%. So we simply take them at their rated value. Our water heater, our tankless water heater is 3000. And our pool heater is also 3000. Those go in at 100%. Then what we've got left in our question as well as what we've got left in 8200 is we have item VI, which is electric vehicle charging. We don't worry about it in this example, right? But we also have this 240 volt or 122 40 volt six kilowatt dryer here. So if it's not specifically mentioned above, right? If it's not mentioned anywhere from 8201A I through VI, we take it at 25% if there is a range provided for and if it is above 1500 watts anything that is 1500 watts and below is already taken care of by our basic load at this point so we don't have to worry about it but in this case we have a six kilowatt dryer definitely above 1500 watts and there is an electric range provided for so i can just take this dryer at 25 percent so that's what we're going to do down here we're going to say item vii and I would look around in my question for any of those oddball loads that aren't specifically mentioned above in A201A. Things like your kiln, we like to use the kiln. Things like that hot water tank that we try to trick you with. All of those loads that are not mentioned previously and are above 1500 watts go in at 25%. So in this case, it was our dryer, which was 6000 watts at 25% equals 1500 watts towards that main service. So we've got everything accounted for from 8201A. So we're going to total it up and see what is the total from 8201A. All right, so if we add all those numbers together, we should be looking at somewhere in the neighborhood of 26,300 watts. And this is what we're going to call 8201 a, because we can't call it the calculated load yet. A200 sub rule 1 says we are going to determine the greater of item A or B to decide which is the calculated load of this service. So 
A200 1A is 26,300 versus A200 1B, which if we take a look at subrule 1 item B, we need to make another choice before we can progress here. We look at the total size of our house exclusive of the basement. If it's 80 meters squared or more, our choice is 24,000 watts. If it is less than 80 meters squared, our choice is 14,400. So in this example, my choice is going to be between 26,300 and 24,000, as determined by the fact that this number is 80 meters squared or more. So my choice is between 26,300 and 24,000. Obviously, the larger of the two wins. So we're going to move that over here. We're going to take our 26,300 watts. This now becomes the calculated load for the service. We've determined that it is larger than A201B. So we're going to start with that, 26,300 watts. We're going to divide it by 240 to determine what the minimum ampacity of our service is. And we should see 109.6 amps. This is the number that we can now take with us to table 2, because we're not using table 39 in this example. Table 2, we've already determined from our specs that we have on our house. I'll just move over there. If you look, all equipment terminations are 75 degrees Celsius. So this is where 4006 sub row 1 comes in. If it tells us that 75 degrees is our termination temperature, that is what we will use when we go to table 2. And this tells me that I'm going to choose myself a number 2 AUG that has an ampacity of 115 amps. I can now, from 14104 sub row 1, take that to table 13, and I can select myself a 125 amp overcurrent to protect that number two gauge conductor. The last thing we want to look at in this example is 8108, where we deal with panel spaces. Always good to practice this, right? It tells me in 8108, I'm looking at the information on my question. My required ampacity is 109.6. So we're going to take that 109.6 amps. We're going to go to 8108. The question tells me there's an air conditioner, but it does not tell me anything about how this single dwelling is heated. So I am not going to assume that it has a central electric furnace. I'm going to assume that, worst case scenario, there's baseboard heat, and I need to accommodate for those baseboard heater overcurrents by including the extra panel spaces required, right? So 8108, sub row 1, item C, states that if our required ampacity is above 100 amps but does not exceed 125. So we are above 100 amps but we are not exceeding 125. And there is no provision made for central electric furnace. We require 30 spaces in this panel. Again, to accommodate for those extra overcurrent devices that may be required for baseboard heat 